when Justice Ginsburg asked uh, of the petitioners, she asked, is there a way to ensure proper use of the three drug regimen? The petitioner said yes, with the direct involvement and control by medical professionals. And um, so now then, of course, we come to this fundamental question that all three of you have weighed in and on in various ways. Um, and that's whether physicians should, therefore, take charge to make death less painful in these instances. Dr. Trug, what's your take on um, that, I think, fundamental question? If, if you were to have to be executed, wouldn't you rather have a capable, specialized physician doing this job? Sort of as a you know, philosopher, uh, if, I, if I think of uh, the kind of a hypothetical where you have uh, an inmate who is about to be executed and knows that this execution may involve excruciating suffering, uh, that inmate requests the involvement of a physician because he knows that the physician can prevent that suffering from occurring. And if there is a physician who is willing to do that, and we know from surveys that many are, um, I honestly can't think of any principle of medical ethics that would say that that is an unethical thing for the physician to do. And Let me have, ask a follow-up on that because I'd be curious to hear from a non-medical person's perspective, but also an expert in the law on this, um, how you take the role that physicians should play in this. You've written a recent law review where you would like physicians to actually play more of this uh, role at least in constituting the protocol to minimize suffering. Is, is that still your take on, on, on what our role should be? If we're going to be executing people, I would prefer to have a method of execution where a doctor did not have to be involved, where medical expertise would not have to be necessary. If in fact we're going to, however, have a method that, uh, that would be cruel um, and constitute suffering if we didn't have doctor involvement, then it suggests to me that if there are physicians in the country who are willing to be involved or medical personnel, then I would like to think that they would not be chastised or lose their license or punished by the medical profession for volunteering to take part in an execution to relieve suffering. Well, there is an argument that I think we have to grapple with. Um, Stephen Miles has made it a physician and medical ethicist, um, when he was looking into the records of what happened at Abu Ghraib, um, the very exact same question happened. Um, it was, if you're a prisoner who's about to be tortured, wouldn't you rather have a doctor available to help you um, survive the torture to, so that it could be titrated in ways that avoid killing you inadvertently? and also provide some guidance on uh, how it might be made more effective in various ways. I've thought a lot about Steve Miles' work on, on torture, and actually I welcome the analogy to torture, because uh, there's been a lot written, there have been symposia about whether physicians should participate in torture. And I, I think it all sort of misses the point. Of course physicians shouldn't participate in torture, but fundamentally it's because torture is wrong. And um, this is sort of returning now to kind of my views about physician involvement in capital punishment. While I think at one level we can justify it, as Dave does very, very well, but I think it's to, it, it's to miss the bigger picture. Um, I really believe that capital punishment is, is ethically wrong. And, you know, I think that living in the, in the bubble of the United States as we do, it's easy to lose sight of just how much of an outlier our country is. You know, the United Nations has recently voted to ban capital punishment worldwide. Over 100 countries have. Uh, we stand among a small group of countries that still do capital punishment that I really don't think we want to be, you know, in their company. So then when we come to this question of where can the remedy be found, the directions that seem to be posed are we involve physicians more, or, and let them treat the prisoner as a patient, or we um, come up with alternative protocols that don't involve physicians at all. The, um, uh, the judges in the oral argument seem very uncomfortable with trying to reinvent the protocol for the reasons Dr. Trug has just mentioned. Um, that is, it's not clear that any alternative protocol has enough experience to show that it works 100% of the time and it's pain-free. And, um, and so the natural place, the discussion 
uh, tends to go is towards trying to make sure there's enough professional involvement. Um, is that right, Professor Denno? Was there a disinclination among the justices to be reinventing the protocol on the spot? I think there was a disinclination. I think what became clear during some of the arguments is there's probably not enough information for the justices to determine what what the next direction should be. Uh, you know, there. You know, my recommendation has been that there be a panel of experts who would propose what what would be a viable method of execution uh, and, and offer information that seemed to be sorely needed during, during the oral arguments. I have to say it makes me deeply concerned though imagining us sitting around a table at a conference trying to figure out various ways of executing people and then the prospect of what that becomes that we um, either figure out that physicians have to be continually actively involved and we create a specialty of the execution physician. It, it may not be possible for the court to say that doctors would be allowed to really treat inmates as patients. And so then my question to you, Professor Denno, is, is it um, uh, a realistic thing that a physician could treat an inmate as a patient and that the court would let them control the protocol, make judgments about how to make the suffering less or more and leave them free to have that professional uh, role? I guess my best answer to you is that they've been doing that for 30 years. There have been physicians, as you know, involved in lethal injection since the very first execution in 1982 in this country and the, the involvement of Dr. Ralph Gray. We don't, because of secrecy and the lack of information, we'll never know up, at least up to this point, the full involvement of doctors. But we have many examples of doctors having been involved, the doctor in Missouri, Dr. Carlo Musso in Georgia, et cetera, who have made these kinds of discretionary judgments about drugs or chemicals and what, what should be done. So Dr. Trug, if the court says, um, we need this to go to an expert panel with physicians, lawyers, public citizens to determine a new protocol for execution. Um, would you participate on that panel and should other physicians participate on that panel? I would not participate on that panel because I don't think that capital punishment is ethical. Um, I think other physicians should be free to participate on that panel. And while I wouldn't want to prejudge how they might come out, certainly from everything I've read, I can't imagine that they are going to be able to develop an evidence base for any other approach that is likely to be successful without the immediate presence of a physician. Um, and then I think we have to grapple with the ethics of that. Dr. Weisel, can I ask you the same question? If they say there has to be some expert panel weighing this question, would you participate on the panel to come up with a better execution method? I agree that it should be wholly permissible for other physicians to participate if they wish. Um, I would have to think about it very carefully. A large part would be depending on the intellectual freedom involved in the panel, um, the ability to write a, uh, a dissenting opinion from what the panel comes up with, and moving away from certain constraints that are put around this that seem not to permit way, what I would consider to be successful ways of non-physician involvement. Well, a decision from the Supreme Court in Bayes Versaries is expected this spring, and whatever the decision is, it is bound to have important implications for physicians and the entire healthcare community about our role in punishment. I want to thank all three of you for taking the time to sort through these issues, their complexities. Um, Professor Deborah Denno from Fordham University School of Law, Drs. Robert Trug and, Dr., uh, and David Wiesel from Harvard Medical School. 
for the New England Journal of Medicine, I am Atul Gawande.